Hi everyone, this is Trace here, the humorous tutor. Today we'll be going through some cellular and molecular mechanisms and our mode of transport, two wheels. Today we'll be going through the cell cycle. Alright, so what we're looking at here is a colourful circle. And it's supposed to depict the cell cycle. So we're going to work our way clockwise. Now the cell cycle describes a series of events pertaining to cellular division. Right? And specifically today we're talking about the human cell cycle. Roughly this takes just over a day, just about 24 hours. And largely we can split the cell cycle into four main phases. These are, as you can see, G1 or GAP1, S phase, the G2 or GAP2 phase, and the M phase. These phases in some way describe the divisive process itself. When a cell does not need to divide in any way, it actually remains in a quiescent state, so it's dormant, and this is called the G0. Cells that remain in a reversible G0 phase can enter G1 and go through the cell cycle, and once it reaches mitosis, it can re-enter a quiescent state or it can continue on to G1 again. Let's work our way through the cell cycle, starting from G0 or the quiescent state. Upon appropriate stimuli, this cell from G0 will enter G1. So during G1 or the gap phase, this being a growth phase, this is the first gap phase where the cell is going to prepare itself for the next phase, the S phase. And so during this preparation for DNA synthesis, the cell will increase its production of mRNA and proteins, and also the number of organelles within the cell will increase. Okay, now that the cell is well prepared for S phase, it's time to actually move into the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. Synthesis denoting the new synthesis or creation of genetic material in the form of DNA. It's incredibly important that the cell only replicates its DNA once, so that we have two equal sets of genetic material to separate during mitosis. During the synthesis phase, aside from the new synthesis of genetic material, there won't be very much synthesis of protein or RNA, the exception being histone. After the exact replication of the cell's genetic material, the cell then enters a second gap phase, gap 2. Again, this is a growth phase. During this growth phase, the cell will increase protein synthesis and undergo rapid cell growth to prepare itself for mitosis. Following gap 2 when the cell is prepared, the cell then enters M phase. As you can see, M phase is actually composed of two separate and distinct processes. These are mitosis and cytokinesis. Green is mitosis, whereby that is the actual division of the nuclear material. Mitosis is then followed by cytokinesis, cyto meaning cell and kinesis meaning motion. Therefore, after nuclear division, cytokinesis then follows, which is cellular division. After mitosis and cytokinesis, otherwise known as M phase, the cell can then either re-enter a quiescent state or continue on going through the cell cycle once again by entering G1. This depends on the needs of the cell and the environment. These phases, G1, S and G2, are known as interphase, whereas M phase is separate. Now, let's have a look at what pushes the cell cycle through, otherwise known as cell cycle regulation. Starting once again from G0, Something needs to push the cell out of a quiescent state and push it into the cell cycle, into a cellular division state. This generally happens via growth factors. In response to growth factor stimulation, there is an increase in cyclin D. Cyclin D is then able to bind inactive CDK4 or 6. CDK mean cyclin-dependent kinase. Kinases are enzymes that are able to phosphorylate other substrates. And so the binding of cyclin D to CDK4 or 6 creates a cyclin D CDK4-6 complex. Currently, 
there's an abundance of inactive E2F complexes. So I've put in red here as inactive and green as active. That means that this inactive E2F is unable to stimulate expression of G1-S transition genes. This E2F complex is inactive because of the protein RB bound on it. However, now that we have an active cyclin D CDK46 complex, that kinase activity is able to phosphorylate, and you can see that it's stuck a phosphate onto the RB. What that means is this RB protein that's mutated in retinoblastoma, which is where it derives its name, is no longer able to bind E2F. And so phosphorylated RB dissociates from E2F and we get an active E2F protein that is able to stimulate or promote expression of these G1S transition genes, one of which being cyclin E. Now that we have some active E2F being able to increase expression of G1S transition genes, and also one of them being cyclin E, well, cyclin E is now then able to complex with an inactive CDK2, therefore creating an active cyclin E CDK2 complex. Remembering that active cyclin CDK complexes have kinase activities, which means that it's able to phosphorylate, well then this active cyclin E CDK2 complex is able to further phosphorylate these inactive RB E2F complexes. So it once again, it's that phosphate is going to bind to RB and therefore no longer allow it to bind to E2F. This leaves E2F free to further increase expression of these G1S transition genes. This creates like a positive feedback loop. Further to cyclin E, some examples of these genes include cyclin A and DNA polymerase. And ultimately, what this positive feedback loop does is push the cell out of G1 and into the synthesis phase. Next up, after synthesis, the cell enters the second gap phase. Whilst the events during the S phase and G2 phases are fairly well understood, it's not well understood how the cell is regulated and this transition is promoted. One of the more recent hypotheses is dependent on the ATR protein. This is closely related to the ATM protein, and both of these are kinases. ATR is short for ataxia, telangiectasia, and RAD3 related protein. ATM is a protein that is mutated in ataxia, telangiectasia. Together, ATR and ATM detect DNA damage and respond by phosphorylating checkpoint kinases 1 and 2. Checkpoint kinases 1 and 2 are then able to phosphorylate downstream effector proteins to ultimately lead to checkpoint activation. And so it is believed that there is an intrinsic S to G2 checkpoint that is enforced by the ATR protein kinase. Further to the ATR protein, there is also the CDC protein. Now CDC stands for cell division cycle, and whilst ATR and ATM are kinases, meaning they phosphorylate, CDC is a phosphatase, meaning it dephosphorylates, and it uses water to cleave this bond. It's believed that the CDC family of phosphatases promote exit from the synthesis phase. Following transition into the G2 phase, there must be also something to push the cell out of G2 and into the M phase. Over the course of the cell cycle, there has been an increase in cyclin B, which peaks at the end of G2. At the end of G2 then, with this increase in cyclin B, cyclin B is then able to complex with CDK1. This cyclin B CDK1 active complex is called the MPF, the maturation promoting factor. When levels of the maturation promoting factor reach a critical th threshold, the cell is then pushed out of G2 and into the M phase. During mitosis, there are also several important checkpoints to which the cell must pass before it progresses through mitosis and into cytokinesis. Currently, there is a mitotic checkpoint complex, which is a complex of proteins that inhibit the progression through mitosis. This is to ensure faithful division of the cell's genetic material. Currently, the mitotic checkpoint complex, the MCC, is inhibiting the anaphase-promoting complex. 
As the name suggests, when the anaphase promoting complex is activated, it will push the cell out of metaphase and into anaphase. There will be a further video on mitosis later. One of the actions of APC, the anaphase promoting complex, is to separate and inactivate the maturation promoting factor, which is cyclin B1 CDK1. So, when the cell is ready, it will inactivate the mitotic checkpoint complex, therefore disinhibiting the anaphase promoting complex. When the APC is active, it is able to inactivate the maturation promoting factor, and therefore separating cyclin B from CDK1, and therefore the cell is no longer wanting to promote maturation, rather it is wanting to promote anaphase, and therefore pushing the cell into anaphase and cytokinesis. Once the cell has divided its nuclear and cellular material with high fidelity amongst two daughter cells, the cell is then able to either continue on and enter into G1 once again to go through the cell cycle again, or it can re-enter a quiescent state. And that's it. That's Tracy's overview of the cell cycle. There's a lot more research being done specifically on the regulation and the regulatory proteins involved in the cell cycle because dysregulation of the cell cycle is what can result in cancer. Furthermore, I'll just be doing another separate video on mitosis itself because it's a very tightly regulated system that I think deserves its own little video. Until then, thank you so much for keeping up with me and my random letters and random boxes and lots of scribbles. I hope you learned something from this and until then, we'll see you next time.